Well, hello, hello, hello. My name is Dr. Shanta Haynes, and I'm with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it is my pleasure to have you here. I am so glad that you guys have joined me in this Kingdom Financial Success Plan in Seven Steps. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen because I want to be able to, I value your time, number one, but I want to be able to show you as much as possible. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Shanta Haynes. I'm with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. Our website is H, the number two, htruth.org. And it is a pleasure to have you here. I know that if you are here, you want to make sure that you maximize what you do have from a kingdom perspective. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about me, because I always say you do not want to learn anything about finances from somebody that's broke. If they haven't figured out their plan, they truly cannot help you figure out yours. I am the CEO and founder of Heart to Chart Truth Ministries, and it is my passion to help believers live an abundant life, to help you put feet to your faith, if you will. I am financially independent, retiring early. I've got that fire personality. And I believe that you can too. I don't think that Jesus died for us to financially struggle. In actuality, the Bible says in John 10, 10, that he died for us. The thief comes, but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that is not life when you get eternal life, when you get to heaven, but that is life here on this earth. I have been successful in developing and implementing economic development programs, whether they be on corporate America side, where I worked at General Motors as a program uh, engineer uh, for the first under budget program, including electrical, manufacturing, engineering, and design, all of that taken into account. In addition to that though, I was on the church side, the administrator, for our local church, as well as the internal auditor for the finance department. In addition to that, on the social side, my sorority, I was economic development chair for several years, developing financially fit programs for them to make sure that financial fortitude was the way to go and every aspect of that. I have over 15 years of experience in teaching biblical finances. And what I found in the course of doing that is that I had many of my students that would get the theology and theory portion, but they would not practically apply it. In other words, they did not put feet to their faith. The Bible clearly says that faith without works is dead. You're absolutely right. Now, how did I start all of this from the very beginning? I grew up, both my parents were teachers, one math, one English, so I had the best of both worlds, but we recognize that teachers aren't paid a whole lot. I also have a brother that's two years behind me. So I started thinking early on that as I went to college, it was going to be a bigger struggle for my parents. But with my brother coming two years behind me, if I stayed in college for four years, the typical program, that there will be two additional years where there will be an extreme financial struggle. But I also recognize that college tuition goes up every single year, right? So. I ended up graduating from Georgia Tech in three years instead of four. I effectively saved a full cost of college tuition. So that increase was not going to be there. I did take classes during the summer so that there were some that I was spending, but nowhere near the amount of, of money that it could have been. So that's one of the things that I've done along the way as far as the financial decision making is as far as looking ahead and recognizing that there's some things that you can do. Now, I tell my students, I don't have as many degrees as a thermometer, but I'm getting close. I think that speaks to the fact that I'm an avid learner because I truly believe that if you stop learning today, you stop teaching effectively tomorrow. And I bring with me the wisdom highlights, right? That's what I tell. But anyway, I do have an electrical engineering degree, both a bachelor's and a master's. My uh, bachelor's is from Georgia Institute of Technology with a minor in computer engineering. I also have a master's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Miami. 
I have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD degree in theology. That means that I can break down every single scripture uh, that I do teach. And I do that a lot, especially when it comes to the motivation and the mindset. You really need to be able to be ingrained in knowing what God's word says about um about you and about your situation and things of that sort. Uh, in addition to that, I have a Christian counseling degree as well. I've had the wonderful opportunity over the 15 years. I was teaching biblical finance at a Christian college and university. However, I also did premarital counseling for uh, those that were getting ready to get married that happened to be in our same church as well. So I've had uh, the experience both with individuals as well as couples, as well as corporate. Um, and churches. Um, my goal, again, is I seek to help others gain control of their financial future. I believe that Jesus did not die for us to financially struggle. And if statistics hold, over 70% are dying in poverty, that should not be you. And so I'm here to help you achieve that. Well, let's jump into those seven steps, if you would, and I'm gonna go through these um, respecting your time. So I know I can't be here, but you have to, number one is to get your mindset together. In other words, the way you're thinking. Proverbs 23, seven, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You need to know you're standing in Christ. You need to know that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, but you recognize who it is that you're serving, that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You need to get that straight because if your mind is not straight, then things are going to overwhelm you. Um, you need to remove the roadblocks that are there. Some have a poverty mindset. Some think that um, they're desperate because they cannot get and they're gonna achieve it anyway, any means necessary, things of that sort. Some also have um, a representation or a thought process that they have to always be in debt, that that's just the way it's supposed to go. The Bible says, oh, man, no man but to love him, right? So then we need to, with our mindset, build those affirmations that are going to help us to move forward. Find those scriptural references that are going, the key things that are going to help us continue to move forward. I also talk about the difference between a kingdom versus a worldly mindset. Um, and of course, in the kingdom, we think completely differently. But a worldly mindset would also include the YOLO, um, you only live once, the desperate mindset, the by any means necessary, the selfish thought processes, those things we have to remove out. Looking at the world system today is not going to be something that we need to do. All right, we also need to eliminate overwhelm. Now, one of the things that I recognize is sometimes we get overwhelmed with what's going on in the world. And when we get overwhelmed with that, or we get into a financial crisis, we need someone to come alongside and assist us. But that mindset when we're in overwhelm is we're scattered and we're, our thoughts are all over the place. And we have predators that come in, con artists that come in. The Bible says that the children of this world are smarter than the children of light. They recognize how they can come in and influence us. And we wanna have our mind so sure. If there is a major life change, you know, divorced, depressed, um, a newly widowed, those type of things come in and completely disrupt our mindsets. And we need to have our minds correct. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the first step is to get your mind right. The second one is goal setting. We want to check that off. <clears throat> we want to first <clears throat> and foremost have SMART goals. That means they need to be specific. They need to be measurable. They need to be attainable. They need to be relevant and they need to be time bound. So you're going to set goals, short-term goals, uh, mid-term goals, as well as long-term goals. Uh, where there is no vision, the people perish is the scripture that is, reminds us. Proverbs 29, 18, we need to know where we are going. If you don't have a plan, it's just a wish. You're not going to get there. And in many instances, um, at a college in uh, uh, Ivy League college, they surveyed a graduating class and only 3% had written down their goals. But some 20 years later, those 3% were light years ahead of the others, okay? 
One thing that I like to say, you know, you're going to do different goals, emotional goals, you're going to need to set up relationship goals, where you want your family to be the legacy goals, spiritual goals, social goals, financial goals, and you're going to relate finance to all of these. But in order for it to be successful, you're really going to need to know your why. If you have a strong enough why, you will overcome every single obstacle. But you also need to identify um, the pain of not achieving that goal might move you forward or the pleasure of attaining that goal. So mindset and goal setting are going to be very important for you. Now, the other thing that I want to uh, make sure that we do as well as as I'm talking with you is going into that third step is there savings and giving. You need to have a savings and giving plan. It needs to one, be, be goal oriented. In other words, you've identified short-term, mid-term and long-term goals for savings as well. And then you're gonna look at your tithing and your philanthropic uh, measures, your charitable giving, gift giving. I say first and foremost with the savings and givings, you need an emergency fund. You need to immediately have $1,000 that's available, a minimum of $1,000 available for you to spend on emergencies. I tell my customers, my clients, nine months worth of gross income is your goal for your savings, liquid cash, not a tie to anything else. You have the access to it. I also want it to be automated. You become an automatic millionaire. In other words, it's not how much you, you make, but it's how much you keep that's important. But when you automate your savings, you're paying God first, yourself second, and then you're paying out all of your bills, you're in a better position. Then I also look at under the savings um, side of this, the story, you're going to maximize your interest. Many savings accounts have very little interest but you might then want to move into mutual funds or online accounts. And I've listed some of the um, scriptural references here. A foolish man is going to squander everything that he has, but a rich man does not spend it all. And you cannot really rob God. And as well as when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord and God says that he will repay. So all of that is in that third bucket of savings and giving. When we move to the fourth step, you want to make sure you have a budget. I know many people are like, I don't want a budget, but you have to. Why? Um, it's part of your financial decision making. But what I've also listed here is biblical financial personalities. God created you special, unique. There are certain gifts and talents that he has given you. There's a certain way that you deal with money as well as how you relate to other people and relate with money. And I developed a program where you can remove the struggle from money management based on that biblical financial personality. The Bible tells us we're supposed to count the cost before we begin, right? And so we wanna make sure that we do that. Now, when you look at budgeting, there are four buckets that are listed here for you. And I know you're all probably extremely familiar with them. We've got our income. That's how much we make. We've got taxes that we owe and we have to pay to the government. There's some fixed expenses and that's going to include your mortgage payment or your rent payment. Um, there's several things that are going to be there. If you're paying out um, for life insurance, um, you're paying out for health insurances, all of those things would fall under your fixed expenses, those things that are not varying throughout the month. But then you are also going to have your variable expenses, not just simply miscellaneous, but your light bill, your water bill, those bills that are fluctuating throughout the month, you're going to need to get a handle on that. Budgeting is going to be very key because that's going to be your financial game plan. Debt is that next step. And yes, we don't want money going down the drain. That's what we're spending when we're uh, paying debt with the interest that we're, we're paying to somebody else. The Bible says in the 37th proverb, for, I mean, Psalm 37, Psalm verse 21, says the wicked borrow and pay not again. You know, if you owe, we're supposed to pay it back, especially as kingdom minded people, we're going to do what our father tells us. All right, so the goal for debt is number one to reduce it, but more importantly, to eliminate it as much as possible. 
now in this debt, it's going to include everything, your car payments, your credit card payments, student loans, uh, mortgage payment, anything that you owe. And yes, you're going to have to include if you owe your parents, okay? If you borrowed from them, whatever you have borrowed, you're going to want to pay back. There's several different ways that you can reduce debt and eliminate debt is a snowball method, paying off the smallest bill first and allowing that to then build up and ro rolling over to others. The avalanche method, taking into account the highest interest rate and paying that one off first uh, so that you end up with paying the least amount of interest as possible. You need to have a debt reduction plan, but that requires that you know the total amount that you owe for each one of your debts, as well as the interest payment. That way you can then produce a plan. But debt reduction and elimination is going to be a key step in your successful financial future. Investing is also a key component. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And I say even a good woman leaves an inheritance for her children's children. That's Proverbs 13, 22. But there's some, um, I put them in four different buckets, if you would. There's some no brainers, some things that we don't even have to think about. You're gonna start a 401k, whether it be a Roth IRA or it be a traditional IRA, you wanna be able to have something already set and planned. Unfortunately, most of Americans do not have a financial plan in place. Um, if it's a company matching program, that's a no-brainer. If the company is matching up to 5% of your investment, then you're going to give 5% of your investment because effectively now you have saved 10%. So you want to take advantage of any company matching program. There's also some entry-level investing, just as you're getting started. There's some easy things that you can do, some no-load no mutual funds that are out there. Um, there's Robinhood. There's a lot of different things that you can start investing in. Um, and so you're going to want to make sure that you're doing that. M moving more toward the advance, you're going to need to know the rule of 72, which simply tells you how long it's going to take for you to double your money based on the interest rate that you have. When you figure that one out, you're going to recognize you need to be an investment interest um, instrument as opposed to just savings accounts because it's not going to grow uh, in accordance with the cost of living. You're going to need to know your number of working years that you have so that you know how long you're going to be investing. You're going to look at some growth funds as well as some diversification because you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. Your temperament, though, is also going to be important. Are you risk aversive or are you a, a big risk taker? Are you conservative? Whatever your temperament when it comes to investing, um, you're going to need to know that. When you move into the retirement area, this is where we are sustaining the investments that we have put in. But you need to know, number one, the total dollars that you're going to need. Now, that's going to be based on the fact that you know how much annual income, because you've done your budgeting, you know how much you're going to need on an annual basis in order to sustain your, your level of living. But I also encourage all of my customers to make sure um, that we're living on the interest only and not taking into account the principal. So that would be the goal. So therefore, you always have money for the rest of your life and be able to also leave it to your legacy. <clears throat> when we move into the legacy side of it, estate planning is going to be very key. Now, yes, this is a lot more on the legal side, but you're going to need to know who you're giving it to, when you're giving it, how much you're giving or how you're giving it. But that estate plan is also going to take into account whether you're gonna set up any trust funds, whether you're going to have any um, life insurance products that are going to then be cash accounts so that they will be able to borrow against it, whether it's for their um, college education. So we're gonna deal with some of those and we'll probably deal with some of those a little bit earlier. But if it's for entrepreneurship, if they're going to start businesses, you have the ability to set all of that up. But you need to know your goal. <clears throat> you need to know your goals in advance. Excuse me. So investing is that next step. Credit improvement. Now, credit, you need to know why credit. Credit score 
really is telling an institution your ability to pay back the money. Based on your history, you're gonna need to know the key components. In other words, you're gonna need to know the payment history because um, the number of late payments is going to be detrimental to you, they're gonna go against you. The amount that you owe is another thing that they're looking at, your total debt. The percent utilization, that's the amount that you owe versus how much you have availability to attain if you need it. The length of credit history is also going to be important as well as any derogatory remarks. Now there are three major credit bureaus, that's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. If you find that you have any uh, derogatory remarks that are on there that are not appropriate, that are not correct, then you're gonna need to remove those and you need to go to those specific websites um, up front and, you know, and just get those removed. But what's important is you need to know that you can get a free credit report every single year, but there's some other tools that you can have as far as knowing what your score is, but you do need to know. There's some tactical ways that you can improve your credit score. And I like to put a lot of those on autopilot so that there won't be a problem and you can maximize what your credit score is, but it can change over time, but it is a history. Now, why do you need a, an, ex, an exceptional credit score? You need one because it's going to tell the lenders how much they can loan you, but at what interest rate they're going to need to loan it to you. The higher the interest rate, that means the lower your credit score, but the higher your credit score uh, equivalents to a lower interest rate, meaning that you're not paying a lot more just to borrow money. Okay, so those were the seven steps. That's mindset, goal setting, get those in place. You're gonna then turn around and get your savings and giving goals in place. You're gonna eliminate or remove your debt. You're going to look at your credit score. You're gonna look at investing. And I can't remember, I think, I think those are the seven. All of those things you're gonna need to pay attention to. Very much so. Okay, so is, you're probably looking at all of this and saying there's just so much that is there. If you have that in place, wonderful. You are doing an excellent job, successful when it comes to your finances. If there are any specific areas that you need assistance in, I would love to work with you. I do have different programs that are available for you from the online classes, whether it's a biblical financial personalities or financialopoly, which is the financial piece of it, money management. Um, those are available as well as some books from a devotional planner to a do-it-yourself workbook to the theolog theology and theory, not just paper book. All of those are available, but I promise you it's money management God's way. I say I'm your biblical money management expert and biblical money management strategist. And my whole passion, my goal is to change the economic footprint, not only of you, but also for your family and then ultimately for our community. Now, I also do some financial coaching, whether I do individual or group, and I've got a group coaching that is starting very, very soon. So if you're interested in that, I want you to jump right on the bandwagon, quick, fast, and in a hurry, because it is going to be moving forward. Uh, and there'll be some times that you will not be able to enter into that. Do I have some testimonials? You're absolutely right, I do. Um, from Cindy saying that she's financially, she's finally in a place where she's no longer struggling with her finances. She's already sowed some seeds in several ministries that she knows is good soil. But for years, she could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. She was over $9,000 in credit card debt. She's been struggling financially, but because of going through the program, she's in an ex a exceptionally better place. All right, financially successful, and she's moving forward in that. Um, you look at Wanda's uh, testimonial. I mean, and I love her testimonial because we did a one day uh, complete overhaul of her finances, and she's feeling successful about it uh, as well. Positive and precise lesson she said in overcoming her fear, her procrastination, as well as her negativity. After her Wisdom Wealth session, that we had with her, her banking fees were eliminated, her overpayment of utilities was refunded, her emergency account was fully funded, 
her saving and giving and fun was all in her budget. Everything was automated. Her credit score is up. And best of all, she's going to be debt free in six years, even on a fixed income. And this was a person who thought she would always be in debt. She is moving forward. I am so excited about what she is doing. I also um, wanted to mention that I do speaking engagements. I am available to speak at different churches as well as seminars and retreats. I've done them over the years uh, to great success to help those who are trying to make sure that they bring a community of people up together. That, that is an excellent opportunity. Some of the videos that I've done have been shown on um, television as well. And in addition to that, videos are available on my website along with the online classes. I also have a podcast I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it here, as well as a YouTube channel. But on the podcast, I will be interviewing different people. It is transformative, biblically based truths, not just finances, but it does go into the financial area, as well as some of the other things that are blocking us when it comes to mindset. I am going to be um, very cognizant of your time, but I do want to let you know that I have a financial success group coaching program. That is a 12 uh, session program. It uh, takes a quarter in order to get through it. It is a way for you to invest in yourself. It is so important that not only that you invest in yourself, but you're really investing in your financial future and the financial future of your family. So financial success, um, I'd love to assist you. That is a 12 week program. It goes through all of what we have covered today. I also have financial advance which is for those who may have some of the, the mindset and the goal setting somewhat taken care of and just need to tweak their finances, especially in the investing side, the retirement side, the budgeting side. That's a six week program that is coming up very rapidly here. So you wanna jump in on that. But I also periodically conduct a wisdom wealth workshop and that is a four hour workshop, uh, labor intensive to get it all done in that four hours at one time. Uh, I cannot tell you the next time these are going to be offered. If they're being offered on the website right now, please jump in quick, fast, and in a hurry. I will tell you that they fill up extremely fast. So do not wait. If you're ready to invest in yourself, please make sure you do that. I am going to then stop sharing my screen. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and make sure that I get a chance to answer some of your questions. Cause like I said, I am cognizant of your time and I only have about three minutes left, but I did have some messages that came through. One, is there a guarantee on the group coaching? Yes, there is a guarantee, hundred percent guarantee. If you go through my group coaching program, the 12 sessions or even the six sessions, and you don't have a financial blueprint, I promise you, you will have a financial blueprint for you to succeed financially. If you show up, if you play full out and you put everything into it, I promise you, you will have that. If you do not, I will give you 100% of your money back. That's my 100% guarantee. Uh, some of the advantages of the group coaching is that not only do you get the encouragement and the empowerment, uh, the motivation, but you also get the accountability, the step-by-step -step instructions of what you need to do. And I really encourage you to do that. Many of us shy away because we think, oh, somebody else is going to be looking at me. But in actuality, it's the opposite. You know that you are not alone. It is my privilege to be able to do that for you. Now, if you find that you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can schedule that as well on my website. I would love to do that for you also. Again, make sure you find a date and a time that is going to work for you. We need to work with that. But there are limited availability. So please invest and invest quickly. Recognize that it truly is a no-brainer, especially if you're getting 100% guarantee on the, the group coaching. I want you to be in that class. It, I do have some that are coming up. Um, I, I definitely want you to jump in. Like I said, it is a three month period, 12 sessions. Uh, so they're not offered that often. So you need to get in. If you are a Christian woman that is overwhelmed, confused at a crossroads, having a major life change right now, even in financial crisis, um, 
you, and you need to get your finances in order, I really welcome you. I would love to work with you because I want to make sure that you have everything that you need. There are predators out there that are trying to take advantage of you. And I don't want that to happen. Con artists every day. The world system is set up to take as much money away from us as possible. I said, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep that's important. So if you find that you have not been doing your finances or handling your finances, somebody else has been doing it for you along the way, and you want to make sure that you have a secure financial future, please, by all means, register for that class quick, fast, and in a hurry, because I know that it will go. I'm so excited to be here. Um, any other questions that I can answer as far as the coaching is concerned? The online classes are available. Go to the website if you want to see those also. Uh, books are also available, yes, and podcasts, you can find that information there as well. So find me on social media. I'd love to uh, connect with you. There are plenty of other testimonials that are on the website. It has been my privilege. I'm Dr. Shanta Haynes, and my heart is truly to serve you, and I look forward to working with you in the future. So definitely set up your kingdom success financial plan in those seven steps. Make sure you have all seven taken care of number of completion. We want to make sure you have everything in place. God bless.